الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد. So Ibn al-Qayyim he mentions the fourth level of those who completely rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They completely put their trust and they're comforted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, so his condition is that of a person who is being sought by a great enemy, whom he does not have the power to ex repel. So he sees an open fortress and is its master allows him to enter it and then locks its gate for his benefit. And he can see his enemy outside the fortress. So for his heart to tremor and fear his enemy in this situation has no meaning. Why? Because he trusts in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, one who is given a dirham by a king, but it is stolen from him. So the king says to him, I have its like many times over, so do not worry. Whenever you come to me, I will give you many times its worth from my treasure stores. So when he knows that the king is speaking truthfully, and he knows him to be fully reliable, and he trusts him fully, and he knows that his treasure stores are full, then his having lost that will not grieve him. That's because he put his trust in totally in that king, and he, and he has no reason to believe that king will refuse his request or be unable to fulfill it. So Ibn al-Qayyim is making some parables. And then he says... This has also been shown by the example of a baby who is being breastfed in his level of dependence and reliance and is having satisfied with the breast of his mother when he knows no other. So his heart does not turn in the slightest to anyone else. Just as one of those with awareness said, the person having to wuckle is just like a baby. He does not show, he does not know of anything to turn to besides the breast of his mother. Likewise, the person having to wuckle has none whom he returns to and relies upon except his Lord the one free of all imperfections. So it's very important and that shows us uh, what uh, some similitudes of the kind of trust we need to have in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should have in Allah tabarak wa ta'ala because that is showing true tawakkal. That is showing true iman, iman billah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill, uh, will fulfill our, our requests and our needs. That we solely can depend on him, Subhana, because the rizq is with him. He is the one who provides the rizq. He is the one who is al khaliq He created everything. He is the one, he is the sustainer. He is the, the planner, Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is al hayyul al qayyum tabaraka wa ta'ala. So if we put our trust and realize and actualize and understand those, uh, you know, the, the maqam, rabbina, the, 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 the status and the level of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high, tabarak wa ta'ala. If we understand that truly, we'll not be perturbed and disturbed and depend on other than him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that requires iman, strong iman billah. Then he said the fifth level to have good opinion with regard to Allah, the Almighty and Majestic. Husnul van billah, azza Very important. This treatise is very fantastic because here we're going over many different concepts that Ibn al-Qayyim is bringing up just in this small treatise about the importance. All of these are lectures in and of themselves. All of these are topics and masail in and of themselves related to tawheed and related to ibadah. Tawheed al-Uluhiya wa Tawheed al-Rububiya. It's here. It's in this treatise. And so he said, having husn al billah, you know, being positive and have a good, uh, opt optimistic about your Lord. Again, that's tawakkul. Again, that's iman. Because if you have strong iman, when you're weak in your iman, you're going to act contrary to how you should when you know your Lord is watching you, when you know your Lord can, can better your, your situation. And I'm going to give you an example. You know, when we commit sin, we're showing, uh, especially when we're aware of committing that sin, we are showing that we are, are you know, that's weak Iman, of course, and we're showing that our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is weak. 
But we're weak. You know, and that, that our tohid is weak because if we really believe Allah was watching you, if you're really conscious of that, you know he's, he's watching you. But if you really actualize that and you really believe that he can replace that sin, that inclination, that thing that you're tested with, if you realize truly that he can replace it with good, you're not going to commit that. And if you really actualize that, you know, as the Prophet Sallallahu said when he talked about Ihsan, and he said, "In ta'budullaha ka'annaka tara, fa in lam tukun tarahu fa innu yarak." He said, "It is to worship Allah as if you see Him, and because you can't see Him, know that He sees you." So, if you truly, truly realize that, and truly, truly actualize that ibadah to your Lord Subhanahu, of course you're not going to commit sin because you wouldn't commit that same sin. You wouldn't take that puff of weed. You wouldn't. Uh, 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 you know, click that, that, that porno switch. You wouldn't, uh, you know, do whatever you're doing or that inclination to Allah Mista'an, Ikramakum Allah, to homosexuality or something or going to the gay bar or whatever. You wouldn't do that if your, your brothers and sisters were watching you. Your fellow uh, Muslim brothers, you, uh, for a lot of the people, you would feel shame and shy. So how much more would you feel if the one who can create you, forgive you, and destroy you is watching. If you're conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have husn of van, positive, out, uh, uh, you know, instead of pessimism towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have that optimism, then you know that he can, uh, he can better your situation. He can help you defeat those sins that you're tested with. And then he said, so in accordance with your good opinion with regards to your Lord and the hope you have in him will be the level of your reliance upon him in the, the tawakkul. Therefore, some of them explain tawakkul to be having a good opinion with regards to Allah. Then the reality is that a good opinion with regard to Allah urges a person to place reliance in him. Since it cannot be imagined that you would replace your trust and reliance upon one whom you think evil of. Nor would you place your trust and reliance upon one whom you do not hope for good from, and Allah knows best. Absolutely uh, beautiful and amazing what Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, is mentioning. And, you know, very logical. And that's what I, I want us to understand, is we, we should be thinking individuals. And we should have fiqh fi deen. You know, memorize the text, memorize the nasus, go forward and be thinking. Don't throw out your intellect. Don't think some of us, and, 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 and this, myself included, you know, at one point where I thought the intellect and everything is totality is haram or it's bad. No. Look at how would we benefit from these great imams like Ibn al-Qayyim and why do we talk about their books? Because their books are closer to our time period and they make it easier for us to understand because of the examples. Okay, and then of course contemporary scholars especially those with fiqh fi deen who, get, who really explain to the level, to our various levels. We need that, that intellectual capacity. So here Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, is explaining and giving us examples about the importance of, of, uh, of uh, tawakkul. And he's giving examples and the importance of what? The importance of having husn of van billah, to having a good, optimistic view of your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.